Today, I'm going to be talking about a probiotic strain called Bacillus coagulans Unique IS2 for the management of irritable bowel syndrome, or for short, IBS. And truthfully, I mean, I think I should actually clarify that and say that today I'm going to become an unofficial hype man for this probiotic for IBS because out of everything that my team and I here have looked into as far as different studies on probiotics and IBS and the 64 different probiotics we looked into, this one's my favorite. You know, like I hate to play favorites, but that's just the reality of it. Now, of course, I, I want to clarify all of those things that I need to say to ensure that I maintain credibility here. I mean, I know that we don't have a probiotic treatment out there for IBS that's been validated enough. We always need more studies, all of that kind of stuff. But based off of the research that we currently have, if I had to pick one probiotic that would be my and all be all first pick for just a broad spectrum IBS symptom coverage probiotic that I would try for potentially every single IBS subtype out there, be it IBS C, IBS D, U, or M, it's gonna be coagulans unique IS2, hands down. So, first things first, we're going to talk about what it is about the research that's been done on this particular probiotic and IBS that impressed our team. So one thing I want to make clear is that there have been two different studies that have looked at this particular probiotic in an IBS population. Now, the first study that was done was in children with IBS, and that was in a diverse IBS population with individuals who had IBS C, IBS D, and IBS M. And then the second study was in an adult IBS population, but that was only in participants that had IBS C and IBS N. Now, that being understood, one thing I want to mention is that both of these clinical trials had a primary outcome that they were looking at as well as secondary symptom outcomes. So the primary outcome was to assess how the probiotic impacted abdominal pain. And that alone, you know, no big deal. There's tons of probiotic studies out there that assess that. But what really intrigued us about the unique IS2 studies was the way they went about assessing abdominal pain. So just to give a little bit of a reference point here, there are organizations such as the US FDA that set forth guidance when it comes to how different entities should measure clinical improvement of abdominal pain in clinical trials on individuals with IBS. And those organizations have determined that a 30% improvement from a baseline abdominal pain measurement is something that can be considered clinically significant. So that being said, one thing that was really cool about both of the unique IS2 trials in IBS is that they went above and beyond that EMA slash FDA threshold of 30%. And they set their abdominal pain responder threshold at 50%, a 50% improvement from a baseline measurement. And even more astounding than that is that there were actually a lot of individuals in these probiotic groups in both studies that met that high responder threshold. I believe in one study, it was just shy of 85% of participants in the probiotic group met that threshold at the end of treatment. And then in the other trial, I want to say it was just over 93% of percent of participants in the probiotic group that met the threshold. So again, something that caught our attention immediately and won some major points in our book when it came to B. coagulans unique IS2. So now before we start getting into the different symptoms that B. coagulans unique IS2 seems to have helped in IBS in different clinical trials, I think another thing that's important to mention about research pertaining to this probiotic is that outside of just the studies that have been done on this particular strain, there have been different meta-analyses of probiotics in IBS. Now, there was one recently that was a strain-specific review that identified Bacillus coagulans unique IS2 as a probiotic that has been studied more than one time that appears to have potential for managing IBS symptoms. And then there was also another meta-analysis that was a species-specific review, so not specifically looking just at this particular strain. But this study looked at 43 different randomized controlled trials. And after having done that, they decided that B. coagulans as a species exhibited the highest probability to be the optimal probiotic species in improving IBS symptom relief rate, as well as global symptoms, abdominal pain, bloating, and straining scores. 
Now, of course, this was not specifically just about unique IS-2. However, after having gone through the literature when it comes to probiotics and IBS, I will say very confidently that it was Bacillus coagulans unique IS-2 that did a lot of the heavy lifting when it came to those authors concluding that about the species of Bacillus coagulans. Before we continue, I want to quickly tell you about ibsprobiotics.org. So this started out as a research project, but then we ended up turning it into this really cool comparison tool. When you go on the site, you can easily compare which probiotics were most effective for different IBS symptoms, all exclusively based off of clinical studies. In fact, we spent the past two years building it, having analyzed over 50 different probiotics across more than 75 placebo-controlled trials. And the results surprised us. For example, we found that some really popular probiotics were nowhere near as effective as some lesser-known options, and there were even some probiotics that seemed to do more harm than good. So I hope this free tool helps you to cut through the marketing hype and saves you a ton of time when evaluating a probiotic. So now let's talk about how B. coagulans unique IS-2 was impacting different IBS symptoms in these two clinical trials that we were looking at. And we got a little bit of a sneak peek about how um, this particular probiotic was impacting different symptoms from that meta-analysis that we were talking about that just looked at the species of B. coagulans. But one thing that was cool is that both of the trials used very similar symptom scoring kind of tools. And so what we were able to do is get a range between the two studies for mean symptom score improvement. So um, as I'm going through these different percentages, just know it is a range between the two studies that have been done on this particular probiotic. So for overall IBS symptom severity, we saw a 60 to 73.4% reduction in the mean symptom score for that. For abdominal pain intensity, it was a 57.8 to 58.8% reduction. For incomplete evacuation, sort of a marker of constipation, you could say, there was a 61.3 to 73.3% reduction. And then for straining, we saw a 65.6 to 70% reduction. For urgency, we saw a 56.6 to 70.9% reduction. For bloating, there was a 58.8 to 80% reduction. For flatulence, a 62.5 to 88.2% reduction. And then when it came to stool consistency, there was a 50 to 65% rate of participants in the probiotic arm that seemed to gain normal stool consistency. And those benefits appeared to come about week six out of an eight week overall trial. Now, when it comes to how you go about taking Bacillus coagulans unique IS-2, Fortunately, both studies used a dose of 2 billion CFU per day given over eight weeks. So we would suggest that as the dose and trial duration to see if this particular probiotic might be best for you, though you might expect to see sort of like those bowel habit abnormalities related to IBS starting to clear up maybe around the week six mark if you're a responder to this probiotic. And that concludes our video here on Bacillus coagulans unique IS-2 for helping to manage IBS symptoms. Now, that being said, I know that I am super enthusiastic about this particular probiotic strain. And so I'm kind of curious how that has come across to you guys. And I'm wondering, you know, if you were to pick out a probiotic to help manage IBS symptoms, would you consider trying Bacillus coagulans unique IS-2? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video, and as a quick reminder, don't forget to check out ibsprobiotics.org. We're really proud of this research project turned comparison tool that we've made. And of course, it is free and publicly available. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest IBS research, you can follow me here. See you next time.